We have been brainwashed into thinking that we need to struggle all our lives. That if we're not in a constant state of frustration, fear, and scarcity mindset, we are somehow not winning the game of being a true starving artist. I am here for making 2024 the year that we scratch all that up and say that artists can be abundant, happy, and dare I say thriving when pursuing our creative endeavors. Let's get right into it. Number one is to glow up your community. And specifically, I would say this is in three separate sections. Your squads, your groups, and your teams. Before this sounds like summer camp, let me explain. There's this new thing that I'm seeing, making it seem sexy to do things alone. I don't have any problem with being able to self-create things. I think that's really amazing. But in my opinion, I think there are so many experiences and creations we can make in life that would just be better with a team. And not just creative projects. I think life as a whole is so much more beautiful when you can share it with other people. Something that I always say is this Jim Rohn quote, which is that you're the average of the five people that you spend the most time with, which is something that I've really had to learn these past few years as I continue to audit my friendships and my relationships. To put it really simply, you need a community that is better than you. To spend time with people who you aspire to be like instead of people that you feel like you need to babysit and apologize for. The first part of this is your squads. So your squads are the people in your life who you can text about the randomest things. They are there through the really struggling hard times where you're starting a business or you're working extra hours and you just need to vent to be your accountability buddies, to hold you accountable for the goals and systems that you've set for yourself so you can succeed in your own personal journey. Now it's important to note that these people do not have to be in your geographical location. I have people like this who are in Washington State, Vermont, Arkansas, New Jersey, FaceTime them, call them, text them, voice memo them. You could have these deep conversations and you feel like you will be heard. That's the most important part because the worst thing that you could do is have all these experiences and just feel like you're in this spiral and sit in your bedroom in the dark, frustrated, alone, and sad. <laughs> The next part of this are your groups. Now your groups are kind of these niched communities that you have. If you go to a yoga studio and you have like your yoga friends, or if you have a personal development group or different groups in your area that you can turn to for specific things and that you're seeing regularly, keeping you intact and making sure that you're having human contact. Being an artist can be very alienating when you're creating your own work. We're very lucky that we have access to technology in a way that we can spread our work far and wide, but at the same time, that can make it really hard to, for me at least, get myself up and go out. In my local area, I have a girls group. We meet up once a month, we pick a restaurant or we pick a thing to do, and we just hang out and talk about everything. A lot of them happen to also be artists and musicians. Value-wise, we have a lot of things in common. It's so nice to look forward to that every month. I also have a group that I meet up with on Sundays and we talk about spirituality and self-development. Some of the people from there come from different religions and different backgrounds but we can all have open conversations about the deeper parts of life. That's something that I feel like I can look forward to. There's getting out of your head, which I feel like the squads can kind of help you with, but then there's physically getting out of the house, which I think the groups can help you with a lot. If you feel like you need someone to hold you accountable to go to yoga, you know that you have this group that's going to ask you where you were if you didn't show up, or if you know you want to go to a meetup every month, you have people you can talk to and you have something to look forward to. The last thing are your teams. Now these are people specifically within your career path. The first thing I think about when I think about my team is our band, She Sees Fairies. There's our drummer Garrett and there's Mike and there's Static and there's Matt. We all work together to create music and we all put in our own individual ideas to say how do we elevate this creative collective even more. If you're in a full-time job, you might physically have a team, like if you're in a specific department. These people are really special because they know exactly what you want in the trajectory of your work. And these are people who want to help you get there or who also want to pursue that path and you're doing it together. The important part about this is that you're sharing a creative vision together. We've talked about how a squad helps you get out of your head, a group helps you get out of your house, and a team helps you get out of yourself. It all comes back to this whole idea that you need a creative community in your life. Even if you are a self-producing artist, even if you do this alone, you still need a community to help guide you, to help mentor you. The amount of people in my life who have given me free advice that other people would pay so much money for, but they've given it to me for free because 
I have this amazing community. There's a reason why I put this as number one because personally, when I didn't have a solid community, I could not put out music. I could not stick to goals. I couldn't focus at all. I had all of these aspirations and I wanted to write music and I wanted to do this and I wanted to do that, but I had no one to hold me accountable. It's really important to foster these connections as soon as possible as an artist, because again, it can be so alienating to be creating art and to go through a lot of rejection and frustration and edits and waiting and patience. You need people in your life to reassure you that this is okay, to encourage you to continue going, to motivate you, and just to remind you that you are not alone. That is the whole underlying theme of having a community. The second thing is to feed your goals with the two main ingredients that it needs to thrive. That is manifestation and systems. Sometimes people just work with systems. Sometimes people just work with manifestation. And I believe that you need to have both in order to succeed. So let me explain to you what that means. Manifesting something isn't just hoping for it. Manifesting is doing things like visualization, affirmation, believing in the law of attraction, what you believe. What is this? What is the phrase? Resist persists. What you resist persists. The whole meaning of the law of attraction is that what you focus on is what you will get more of. If you're focusing on releasing albums, you will start seeing around you people you know who work in music, opportunities for you to market your music. You're gonna start seeing things around you that align with this goal. This always has to be in a positive. You can't say my goal is to not be in debt because the law of attraction doesn't understand no, it just understands debt. Debt, 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 debt. The more you say it, the more you give it power. There's manifesting something through like visualization. I visualize every night the goals that I have. That is just teaching your body physically. It's kind of like dress for the job you want, not the job you have. If you are training your brain to look at something over and over again, your brain will literally say, how do I match this gap? Because I am seeing this every night. I need to continue to bring in this reality to make it more of a reality, if that makes sense. Then there's affirmations, which I know all of this sounds very woo woo if you're not really into that. This is why I pair it with systems. An affirmation is a way to speak about something as if you already have it and putting it out into the universe. Maybe it's because I'm a songwriter, but words are so powerful. Words have a vibration that literally change your reality. The words that you use to talk about something are going to shape what your life is. That's the manifestation part. Then we have the systems part. If your goal is to make $7,000 a month from your creative business, you need to take a step back and say, what can I do to get there? What is your creative business? Are you selling products? How many products do you need to sell at what price point? If you're selling services, how many clients do you need to have? Would you prefer to have three large clients or several small clients? How much do you have to charge? What do you need your rate to be? What do you need your services to be? How are you going to actually get those clients? Are you gonna cold pitch them? Are you gonna go on a platform like Upwork or Fiverr? Are you gonna go around town and market your services like that? The main point is that your goals are fed by manifestations and systems. This is like such a big part of achieving your artistic goals. A big part of this too is auditing your life and trying to figure out how much of it you're currently giving control to. When I was auditioning for a lot of shows back in New York City, the majority of the decisions that were going to be made on my behalf was from casting directors. The goals that I were setting for myself was get cast in a show by March. I don't have any control over whether I get cast in a show, but I have control over the systems that I create to make it happen. Go to five auditions a week, practice your material, go to more open casting calls. This whole second step of setting goals is about making more things in your control. Manifesting things is you controlling your own reality without trying to control everything. I don't want to necessarily say that you should try to control everything in your life because I think that you should also leave it up to a higher power. That's a whole other conversation. And this is basically giving you control of your own goals and your own destiny. Manifesting is going to help you do that. Setting systems is going to help you do that. The third element in the better way to be an artist is dare 
to follow slow living. You have probably seen hustle bro culture a lot around YouTube. There's a lot of this element in artistic careers and creative careers. I remember going to acting school and the teacher saying like, we've had people whose parents have died and they didn't go to the funeral because they came to this class. If you're missing class, you're kicked out. There is a lot of fear, implicit fear built into artists and the way that we're talked to, talked about and trained. I think there's a way to actually embrace this idea that we don't have to kill ourselves physically and mentally to do this, we actually should be doing the opposite. As creatives, we should be invigorating and inspiring and feeding ourselves and feeding our souls because that's the only way we can feed the rest of the world with our creations. So how do we do that? Slow doesn't necessarily mean have nothing going on and have no goals. It means being more intentional. So what I want you to do, you have unlimited money, you have unlimited resources. What would a week look like in your ideal life? For me, I realized that it wasn't getting up at 5 a.m., going over to an audition, signing my name on the non-union list, coming back, working out, showering, putting on my jewel tone dress, going back. It was a lot slower, it was a lot more intentional of waking up and having a green powder and having tea and listening to music and going outside and clipping flowers and having so much beauty. One of my friends, Ash, actually told me, so credits to Ash for giving me this. Instead of using the word schedules, using the word rituals. So much of the content that we're fed sometimes is like, get on a schedule, get on a routine, wake up at the same time every morning, blah, 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 blah. If you look at things as rituals instead, you might be able to give yourself a little bit more leniency too. Like instead of wake up at 7 a.m. every morning, maybe make it a ritual to wake up between seven and 7.30. Play with the idea of having a gentler approach to life and to your body and to your mind and to your wellness. This is the only way that we could feed other people with what we love to do is if we take care of ourselves. Taking care of ourselves means that we're surrounding ourselves with things we love and people we love, which brings me into my next point, which is to have a spark joy audit of your life and continue living this way. I have found that it is so important for me to be in a place that inspires creativity. I have freaking butterflies above my bed. Like I have a dark purple room and flowers everywhere. This is what makes me happy and this is what inspires me to be able to create and wake up with literally so much energy and enthusiasm every day. Becoming more attuned to your home can also help you create a home setup where you don't have to rent out a studio, you don't have to go somewhere else. Your art is already in here, but physically, if you have a really close place to start creating or start dreaming things up, that is gonna save you so much time and so much money, and it's gonna make it easier to do. It's that whole idea that if you want to wake up and exercise every day, you gotta have your clothes laid out, you gotta have everything ready. The harder you're gonna make it to do your craft, the harder it's going to be to actually get it done. So why not have a setup in your home? If you heard the phrase spark joy and you thought of Marie Kondo, Yes, because that is how we did our home and it has changed everything. It has changed the way that I look at items, relationships, people, actions. Everything is more intentional. When you ask yourself if they truly spark joy, if a person sparks joy, if a thing sparks joy. By the way, I am in a rental right now. I am totally fine absorbing the cost of like having to repaint all these walls and take out all the tax because it makes me feel more inspired. Even if you're in a rental, consider ways that you can live more intentionally in a space that actually inspires you. Start a Pinterest board. What colors do you like? What colors make you feel happy? What things make you feel happy? What textures? Do you like glass? Do you like marble? Do you like... Velvet. Oh my gosh, I've been watching too much Seinfeld. I also do highly recommend you read Marie Kondo's two books, Spark Joy. Oh my gosh, I'll put the names up here. The Life Changing Magic of Tidying Up and the other one is Spark Joy. And I think it talks more about what sparking joy means because I know when I read that book, I was like, but how do I know if it sparks joy? That one will show you how it's done. Do an audiobook, that's what I did. This leads into the next point, which encapsulates the last two things we talked about, which is to be mindful about every single thing that touches your body. I mean everything that goes in your body, everything that goes on your body, food, snacks, drinks, lotions, face washes, shampoo, clothing. All of these have different vibrations. I am not a specialist in any way at all of this stuff, but I do know that my life has significantly changed when I cut out processed foods. For me, that's been cutting out meat, dairy, gluten, which seems like it's everything, but I promise it's not. This isn't actually just telling you like, eat well. But if we go back to this idea that in order for you to properly create your art, you need to nurture 
your body. You've got to put your mask on before you put everyone else's mask on. You need to be able to be your fullest, most healthy, fulfilled, happy, creative self in order to exude your mission and your creations into the rest of the universe. And how do you do that? It really is taking care of yourself. I know that's such a general thing to say, like what actually does that mean? Start reading the labels of everything and start doing a little bit more research into the things that you're purchasing. The bread that you bought, is there anything in the ingredients that you're like, what the heck is that? Look up what that is. There's so many companies that try to greenwash and tell us that such and such is healthy for you and such and such isn't healthy for you but start doing your own research on the things that you're putting in your body and genuinely be like, is this good for me? I follow a lot of alternative, holistic, functional health and medicine practices. I know it sounds so random to tell like, Here's how you can be a better artist, read labels. This is the entirety of being a better artist is to bring more intentionality to your life. Be more intentional about what makes you happy, what people in your life are fulfilling you, what things are fulfilling you, the comfort that you feel at your own home. If you want to continue to be selective about the things around you, you will definitely want to watch this next video, which are the three mistakes that I made when I released my first creative project. I can't guarantee you're not going to make these mistakes, but I just want you to at least learn from me and be aware of them if they happen. And if you want to join the community, then subscribe. I would love to see you around and I will see you next time. Bye. Oh, I love these flowers. I just want to keep them inside, but the cats are going to destroy them. I need to refill my unscented beeswax candle. I kind of want to start making them. It doesn't seem too difficult, right? That's like the famous last words.